Hey Robert, welcome back. Let's make another bowl of eyeball soup here today. Now, I went looking around, again, just in our vision training kit, that is to say our green bag of goodies that we find around the house. And this is what I came up with today. This is a carton from some eggs from the store, and I've cut it into a few pieces. And I've also got Robert a piece here. And I've got a handful of different balls that I found around. Balls are a lot of fun to play with, Robert. Whoop. Let's try that again. Uh, you can do a lot of fun things with uh, just typical little balls. The, the important thing is to observe sort of the properties of what we've got. Some balls are obviously a lot more sort of uh, elastic or bouncy than others. This is kind of a dull uh, ping pong ball kind of thing that came from a game from a dollar store. Here's another little kind of a ping pong ball, but they all have different properties. This one's kind of not nearly so bouncy or anyway, it's kind of noisy anyway. All right, so what we're going to do here, Robert, is uh, there's a variety of things that we can do here to build visual motor skills. And the basic thing that we're gonna start with is we're gonna take one of these cartons and we're gonna put a ball in there. And it's very straightforward. What we're gonna do is try and catch the ball again with the carton, watch. Okay. Try and catch it back in the same hole. I'm not having very much luck. There you go. Let's do it again. The higher we go, the harder it is, and so forth. All right. So, different varieties of things that we can do with this, but it's kind of fun. You can kind of do it safely around the house, sitting on the couch, sitting at the kitchen table. And what we're doing here is we're developing all kinds of really fun visual motor skills, and we can do it in a more interesting way than your typical you know, uh, paper, pencil, skills, and maze drawing and line drawing, this kind of thing. So what we're going to do in in, uh, in this case is we can turn it into different games and including uh, asking your client or the child what kind of games they'd like to play with this, okay? So uh, let me give you another example. We're going to start in hole one and we're going to bounce it from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so one, two, oh, oh, three, three has to go to four. Four, five, six, and so forth. You can also, if you like, Robert, you can take this guy and uh, you can put letters in it and you can have the child pick letters or spell words out with that. It's kind of fun. And like I said, you can modify the difficulty level by using a different kind of ball, okay? And if the ball's too hard, then just switch it up. Get something that's a little easier, okay? But there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this and Again, try it with different balls because there's different properties. And you can also, if you want to level it up a little bit, you can try with one hand. Okay, you can try it with the other hand. And Robert, if you're really good, and I know you're really this good, because you've got a lot of experience doing this kind of thing. Two-handed, buddy. Can we do two hands? Oh. I don't know. Some people might say that's lame, but... I'm kind of impressed with what I'm doing here, honestly. All right, so you get the idea. Egg cartons, buddy, balls, it's all good. It's in your closet right now, probably, in your recycling. Make good use of it. You got all kinds of time to do all kinds of fun things around the house that are not related to applications. You know what, buddy? I charge these up and they're gonna last forever. I know it's an old joke. But the thing is, truly, we need to be getting kids away from a flat visual environment, doing the same set of visual motor skills all the time. Let's get them involved. This kind of a thing challenges the whole child, the whole body, the vestibular system, many aspects of the visual motor uh, interaction, and many aspects of just the visual system. You know, targeting, anticipatory cicadic movements, jump movements, we're planning where things should go. So many things going on here, Robert. It's, uh, it's a lovely little activity and you can, you can shake it up, you can bake it up all kinds of different ways for fun. You can use different colors, you can use multiple balls, you can go two hands, mix it up. You can leave your comments uh, below if you're watching this and Robert also, I want to hear what you have to say about this. How would you modify this and uh, what kind of applications in particular maybe do you think uh, you would uh, put this to use in? All right, well, I'm going to get back to you after you look at this and tell me what you think. An egg crate, what another great idea. So this is another activity that offers us a lot of opportunity to grade an activity, to make it harder, to make it easier. 
Um, we could take and make that uh, egg crate smaller instead of having five by five rows. Maybe we just make it four by four rows. And then we attempt to toss the ball back and forth between two people. Um, but different sized balls. Again, it's another great uh, gradable activity. Um, very simple, something the kids will get a kick out of. Uh, and it's not really expensive. I get um, so often, particularly as folks go and, and look for information on vision therapy tools or vision rehabilitation tools, um, what they come across is all of these sort of computer programs that simulate this or, or a VR, a, vir a virtual reality game that simulates that or um, even some of the activities uh, um, that are available on some large touchscreen devices are simulating real space activities. And those are good tools and um, they're flashy, but they're very, very expensive. Um, so anytime we can find nice, simple things to use in the clinic that are very effective interventions, um, uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing for us. Um, that's a very uh, OT sort of thing to do. You know, Dr. Boulay, you'd have made a pretty good OT. Thanks for sharing this activity as well. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, Robert, uh, the way that we can apply these things from uh, the kitchen table, so many things we can do. I look forward to exploring more of these with you. Again, I love doing this stuff. Simple tools, find it in the house, you're good to go. We've got much more to come. Feel free to share these things. Tons of good things you can do with kids at home. Keep them interested, build some strong visual motor perceptual skills. We look forward to sharing more with you. We'll talk again soon.